RESTful and GraphQL APIs are two popular choices for building web APIs, each with its own strengths and weaknesses. Let's have a closer look at what RESTful and GraphQL APIs are, their differences and when to choose one over the other. RESTful APIs have been around for quite some time and are commonly used, while GraphQL is a newer technology that has gained popularity in recent years. RESTful APIs follow a set of architectural principles and constraints that dictate how the API should be designed. They use standard HTTP methods such as GET, POST, PUT, PATCH and DELETE to perform operations on resources and the data is usually returned via JSON format. RESTful APIs are stateless, meaning that the server does not store any client context between requests. Instead, each request contains all the information needed by the server to process it. This makes them highly scalable as they can handle large volumes of requests without being burdened by session management. One of the main principles of RESTful URL naming conventions is to use nouns instead of verbs in the URL path. For example, instead of using a URL like get user profile, it is more appropriate to use a URL like users slash user ID slash profile to fetch the user's profile. GraphQL is a query language for APIs that allows clients to define the shape and structure of the data they need. With GraphQL, clients can make a single request to the server and receive exactly the data they ask for and nothing more. Unlike RESTful APIs, GraphQL provides a single endpoint, often it's slash GraphQL, which always takes a POST request. Clients send a single request to this endpoint and the server will respond with the requested data based on the query or mutation which is sent via the request body. This approach makes it easy to manage and version the API, as all changes can be made in one place. GraphQL APIs are also stateless, the server does not store any client data, and each request contains all the information in the request query. Now let's compare RESTful and GraphQL APIs. Based on data fetching, RESTful APIs follow a strict request response cycle, where each request from the client results in a single response from the server. This means that clients often need to make multiple requests to fetch related data from the server, leading to overfetching or underfetching of data. GraphQL, on the other hand, allows clients to request only the data they need and nothing more. Clients can specify the structure of the data they need, which reduces overfetching and underfetching of data. In RESTful APIs, the server defines the data schema, and clients need to parse the returned data to understand the schema. On the other hand, GraphQL has a strongly typed schema that defines the data available in the API. Clients can use this schema to validate their queries and understand the data they receive, reducing coupling between the client and the server. RESTful APIs have built-in caching mechanisms using HTTP caching headers. This allows clients to cache responses and avoid unnecessary requests to the server. GraphQL does not have built-in caching mechanisms, but clients can implement caching strategies using third-party libraries. Based on performance, RESTful APIs can suffer from performance issues when clients need to make multiple requests to fetch related data. This can lead to increased latency and network traffic. GraphQL's ability to fetch only the required data in a single request can improve its performance and reduce network traffic. However, if you are not careful, poorly optimized queries can lead to more performance issues and bring your server down dramatically. 
in that sense GraphQL's greatest strength can also be its greatest weakness. Choosing between RESTful and GraphQL APIs depends on your specific use case. RESTful APIs are great for simple applications that require high scalability, while GraphQL is ideal for complex applications with varying data. Both RESTful and GraphQL APIs have their strengths and weaknesses. Keep in mind that choosing between the two isn't always an either-or situation, and in some cases a hybrid approach may be the best option. Thanks for watching and see you next time.